As the general manager of a printer manufacturing company, John is responsible for managing his mobile workforce team. Thanks to Costella's intelligent mobile and web application, John can simplify the management of his field agents, field service teams, and the company's fleet of vehicles on a single platform. With Costella's smart assignment, John can select his staff according to their availability, location, utilization, and skills. This contributes to the visibility in Costella's SLA management, like knowing when you are about to breach your customer's SLA and undertake preventative measures. Costella lets Sarah know when an agent is expected to reach her location to fix the problem. The field agent records all essential details of the job and updates the digitized sign-up documents in real time. To reduce paperwork, increase productivity, and decrease manual errors. What's more, the Assets and Inventory Management feature streamlines any spare parts or tools used by the field agent and helps reduce company costs. Once the job is completed, John shares the work invoice with Sarah online that's made with an integration to her ERP. For John's team, time spent at work is compiled in the application for purposes of overtime and other possible work compensation, all in real time. Just like John, you too can manage and optimize response and resolution, improve field team assignment and management, speed up billing and keep a clear track of the movement of assets and inventory. Catering to various industries and departments, Costella's unified platform can manage field sales, service and transport whilst keeping track of their SLA. Request for your free demo today. Hi, good afternoon everyone and thank you to each and every one of you for taking your time today to join us. I am Rachel Tree, the manager of the Waste Management Association of Malaysia. And on behalf of WMEM, I'm really excited to be working with Costella today on a very interesting webinar session. So as we all know, WMEM is a Waste Management Association in Malaysia and we are a nonprofit that mainly focuses on waste management and environmental topics, specifically for businesses and technologies. However, today with Costello, we would be diving into a slightly different topic on how to manage manpower and assets, especially to keep track of your daily tasks and status that may be challenging to your waste management business, and how technological innovations can also help you optimize your operations. A brief introduction about Castella. So Castella Sunir Berhad is a leading provider of cutting edge technologies and services, offering, offering scalable solutions for companies of all sizes. Castella's field service is a software application that is designed for organizations to plan and manage work, information, assets, and people that are mobile. They build their solutions by closely listening to your, the customers and clientele and understanding their expectations and pain points. Using predict, uh, predictive algorithms, Costello intelligently optimizes people management, time and money spent, as well as assets. So without further ado, let me welcome Ditto to kick off this webinar today. And I wish you all uh, to enjoy this session today. And thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, Rachel, for your time. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you uh, for joining us today. My name is Dito. I'm from Castella, and I will be your guide today. And before we begin, I'd just like to inform everyone that your mic and webcams are muted for the purpose of this webinar. However, we enable the Q&As and polls uh, right under uh, the chat uh, option there. So we encourage for you to engage and also submit your polls and question, and we will be able to answer it at, during our Q&A session. Right, so now uh, let's start uh, things off by introducing my, our speaker today. So I have here Mitran Balakrishnan. He is a commercial director for Castella. And then we have Andrew Thomas. He is the managing director of Castella. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hi everyone. How are you, everyone? Are, are you good? I'm good. Uh, thank you very much to WMEM for having us. Uh, thank you very much for all of those who are here today. 
uh, for joining us. And um, you know, I must extend uh, great gratitude to all of those who are behind the camera in making this uh, happen today. So thank you very much. Absolutely, I echo what Mithun said. It's an honor to be here. Uh, it's an honor to get the opportunity to talk to all of you. All right, so this is a great day. And yeah, so just uh, for the audiences uh, wondering, what are the video that uh, uh, we show earlier uh, during the intro is basically related about Castella. Castella as a field service management system. And maybe Mitran and Andrew, you might want to tell us, uh, the audiences about what is Castella. Sure, uh, maybe I can start. Uh, Castella is a field service management and a transport management uh, application. Tesla, of course, looks into various different aspects of your field activity. When I say field activity, think about technicians on the ground getting work done or uh, drivers on the ground who are driving trucks and you want to know what's happening there. Now, uh, there are four main aspects of Tesla. Firstly, is with regards to orders. Uh, orders meaning that, say, for example, um, you know, there's a work order, there's a job order, a delivery order that needs to happen. This may come from various sources, from a portal, uh, from a phone call, from an email. Now, we are able to capture this within Castella. The next part is the planning, which is, you know, I've got various drivers, trucks, I've got various technicians out there. Who's the best person to get this job done? There's skills, there's availability, there's location, uh, utilization, you know, how busy they are as well. Castella helps to automate this for you. It replaces things like paper, spreadsheet, and so on. So Castella is able to take away that tedious uh, planning process. Then happens the activities on the ground, which is the execution which is, you know, are they there at the site, you know, the check-in and check-out, the photos, any notes that are necessary. That's the next thing that customers are able to do for you. And at the end of the day, the key things to uh, customers, which is basically the reporting, uh, the analytics of what really is happening in the background. And in, in addition to this, uh, customers are able to help with the SLA, which is basically, are you, you know, are you breaching your SLAs with your customers, as well as your assets and your inventory, where are your items, where are your spare parts and so on. So that's, uh, a summary of what my uh, I would say Kasla is all about. Uh, thanks, Mithun, for a comprehensive answer. That doesn't leave much for me. So, uh, <laughs> that makes my life a bit easier. But I would say this, though, in summary, that Castella helps to organize your work, streamline your processes, and produce the information clutter. So you've got so much of information coming in. You've got 20, 50, 100 people in the field. What do you do? How do you organize it? Who's doing what? So... From a management and a company point of view, it takes away a lot of your work. It manages your work better and explains how it does it. Right? So reduction in headache is your number one benefit, optimizing your time and your effort and your resources. So, right, right. So, um, Mitran, you mentioned about earlier about papers. Right? So I'm, I'm sure this is something that everyone has in common. And just last week, last week, actually, I spoke to one of the top prospect from uh, Castella as well. And what they said is, Dito, we're doing just fine. We're doing just fine with our current process. What the current process is papers, paper, um, a manual, Excel sheet. And they said to me, why, why do I need to change? And also, what are you thought about this? Uh, because my thinking is, is uh, should they follow everyone to digitize uh, 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 while they're doing well? Or should they start thinking or they just can do whatever they want for the time being? Let me take that out. Um, there's a couple of things that you could probably get from just uh, cost savings. And one of the things it, it uh, does is that when you use something like Castella, you're basically going out of manual processes. So yes, there's cost savings you may not be aware of. So a lot of people say, why do I need to do this? I'm fine. My business is doing well. But you don't know about the cost savings that you could have. Uh, the efficiencies that you could get. And it's not just about you know making more money or saving more money or reducing people, it's about using people more effectively. Um, you get better service out of your uh, out of your company, what your, how your company treats your clients, because you know what is going on, you can respond better. How often have you got people that says, you know, they're coming at two, they don't show up till four and they never call in between. It's such a pain. All of this goes away in Castella because you know where they show up, you know where they do the job. When the customer is happy, not happy, you get much better improvement in service. Uh, customer satisfaction goes up immediately, obviously. But and the other thing is they also keep you in business. What you don't realize is that you have set up a differentiator with your customers, competitors, sorry. And when you do a better job, uh, you secure your position with your customers because somebody else is coming for your business in the long term. So those are some of the things beyond just profit and loss. 
uh, that, that would, you know, that we, that we should consider when moving to a system like Estella. Yeah, I think you mentioned our paper in Excel, and we had this in particular with one of our customers where um, they had 50 over people, 50 over technicians on the ground. Uh, and they used to be doing things a lot on, you know, actual documents, paper that's sitting on a particular table, spreadsheets, and even whiteboards. And the moment MCO hit in and, you know, they, were, they needed to work from home, they were hit because they were unable to know, you know, who's doing what. Are my guys done? Uh, and this is one of the key things that they had. Imagine having to service 100 over locations with your 50 people and doing this off paper. And this is something that we were able to help. Other than that, I think is, you know, another example is we used to work with, uh, we, had a, we have a customer who, they used to use an on-premise system. And this system was able to address the HR aspect of their work. But uh, what happened is that they had about 400 over jobs. And with these 400 jobs, they were not able to keep track of what was happening with the customer. Because all the paper activities, it was happening on the ground. They were not able to see, you know, uh, you know has the customer signed off? Can we build a customer? And 400 jobs across various locations in the country, uh, you know, West Malaysia, East Malaysia, this is certainly, uh, you know, uh, something that they needed to look at. And when they moved to Kassala, they were able to manage the HR as well as their, uh, the, the customer aspect. The other thing I think is also about insights. I think that's, that's a key thing, which is activities is one part, but I think insights about what can I do better? What are my key issues? Those are key things that you miss if you don't utilize it. That's very interesting. And so far uh, for me in the line of business uh, technology, I mean, I have people that come up to me actually like, hey, Nito, this solution is actually working for us. I mean, so they, meaning they, they get the ROI out of their investment and the implementation of this system actually helping them through, uh, throughout their operation. But also at this line of business, I get scolded a lot. <laughs> I mean, I got, I got, I got uh, screaming, I got angry, I get disappointment, I get a, a written note and everything like, hey, Nito, yeah. this uh, system, Sorry, that was a bit of there. Yes. But, uh, yeah, to answer that question, it's not just about a system. And this is very important when people implement you know, technology. People think, oh, yeah, I bought this fantastic software, it solved all my problems. It depends on how you do business. So, how you do business comes up to business process. So one of the key things you're going to need is you're going to have, uh, you're going to identify the right business process that you want to do. You cannot just take a paper process that you're doing now and move it to technology, move it to digital. Because what happens is you end up having an inefficient process uh, on a digital platform. It, it doesn't solve any problem. It only creates more headache. Uh, so one of the things you need, firstly, is, is, is a, a person or a group to consult with you. What is the best way to do things going forward? What are your objectives? So a consulting approach is key to implement any solution. That's tell us aside. Uh, and that's something we bring to the table as well. We are consultants on business process. We understand how your business needs to operate. What are the objectives you need to uh, achieve? As opposed to, this is what I do. I want a system to do it. Why are you doing it? Why are you filling up three forms? Why do you need five signatures? That entire process can be simplified. That's one of the big aspects of going digital. We change the way you do business. Obviously, to more efficient, streamlined process where you have that much less uh, interactions that are unnecessary. So the more, the fewer moving parts, the less likely for mistakes to occur. So I think uh, the right consultant, redesigning your processes and understanding that a simpler process very often is the right way to do. Uh, and many of the things you're currently doing now, you probably don't need to do. And many of the things you're doing now you can do much more efficiently because the same information flows from within the app. You don't have to send paper to somebody. You don't have to file some document. You don't have to send anything. It's all there. And it's a matter of a seamless interaction that is moving parts. So, you know, all of that needs to be crafted before you implement. Otherwise, you just have another white house. So I hope that helps. Yeah. I think another key part to that is the people aspect of it. Because the people aspect of it is you're not able to, you know, identify who are your top performers. Who are the guys who we should be rewarding? Who are the people that we should be recognizing? Now, we used to have a customer, I mean, the, the customer of ours used to be able to do like two to three tasks in a, in a particular day. But now they're able to do between four to five tasks on a daily basis. The reason for this is now with better visibility, they were able to do more. And now the company was able to identify who are our top performers, who are the guys who are going beyond and they're able to actually step in and, you know, start taking on more duties. They're able to take on stuff which are more complex, for example. 
other than that is also for us to be able to know uh, what are the things which are you know frequently breaking down kind of went to that earlier because if it just becomes a data entry system everyone doesn't want to use it because you know i might as well just do it the way that i'm doing it but if i'm able to gain an insight if i'm able to say hey i'm getting you know 30 calls or 50 calls of complaints you know every month but if i'm able to reduce this by identifying what are the issues that are coming up who are the customers that are coming in I certainly am able to add value. I'm able to gain value from it. I think the next thing of it is the visibility of our assets. You know, sometimes you get caught up in, a, you know, taking care of our customers, you know, ensuring our guys are there, but it's only much later they realize, hey, where are my parts? You know, I thought we took it the other day to this particular customer. Where is it now? Uh, and that whole chain of activity gets lost because, you know, there are many hands that touch it. The warehouse guy, the person who is going to repair, it goes to the customer side, maybe take back some parts, and all of these are missed. The visibility in one system, I think, is something that we're glad to have helped uh, some of our customers. Of course, the next thing is, you know, uh, keeping our customers happy. One part is, you know, if you have got SLAs with your customer and you need to pay penalties, that's, of course, painful. But I think beyond that penalty is that whole relationship with the customer. I mean, just like your Lazada deliveries, for example, you don't want to call up and find out, you know, where are you, where are you? But imagine if we are pre-informed as, as, as the business owner, you, you are pre-informed and you can keep your customers informed that, hey, we are going to come, but we're going to be 10 minutes late, we're going to be 15 minutes late. Most customers understand, but it's when they're not kept in the loop, when they are not aware, that's when they get disappointed and upset. So I think that's that's a helpful part in terms of value. All right. Yeah. I mean, thank you for sharing. And now we'll take a quick intermission by showing our audience this about the asset and inventory video where based on what Mitch and Andrew talked about. So now have you, uh, you've seen the video. So Mitran and Andrew pointed out, uh, business should understand the goal and uh, the objective, what they want to achieve and choose the system that fits for their operation. And certainly, like you mentioned earlier, system are not uh, just to capture information, but also if company gain insights, intelligence when they implement and use correctly. When we talk about uh, waste management, it's, it's still it's broad. Because within waste management uh, industry itself, it consists companies managing equipments, suppliers, truck waste, water treatment, consultants, machine, and et cetera. Um, help us understand, like uh, earlier, uh, because you mentioned about reactive, preventive, and predictive. How does Castella or other system as well, uh, complementary technologies to provide such value? I'm glad, I'm glad you asked me that question. Uh, actually, my wife asked me the same question <laughs> last night. She asked me that, what's got, what's Kassala got to do with waste management, if I may say? Uh, and I think it's very relevant. I think, you know, waste management, like you pointed out, there's a lot of machines and so on. So let's take those three words, reactive, preventive, and predictive. Now, reactive is really, think about, um, you've got particular machines and you're getting all those phone calls, you know, various machines breaking down, certain machines breaking down more often than not. You need to send your guys out. Sometimes, you know, very often, you know, the customer is one particular machine and the entire day operations goes down. So that's reactive. You know, somebody calls up, they say that, you know, something's broken down, you know, it needs to be repaired by today, it needs to be repaired within this week, that kind of thing. Preventive uh, comes into how can I schedule and how can I ensure that I at least minimize the likelihood of this happening. Preventive is something that currently a lot of companies do it on paper. 
So they may say that, hey, I need to go to customer A and I need to do so, say, in three months. Time. Now, one thing is very human is that we get caught up in all the different activities that we're doing. We miss these activities which are planned because we tend to be reactive to, to, to different calls or you know, uh, messages of you know, needing to repair. So preventive allows you to be able to do things like you know, major repair, minor repair, uh, schedule it maybe every three months or every six months. In this way, with Kassel are some things that we've been able to help. And this, uh, for example, a heavy machinery customer of ours, they are now able to not only you know, plan this, but also ensure that they can assign someone to get the job done. So they don't lose visibility. That in all the business, system is notifying you and making sure that you have something on your calendar to go and address this. Now, predictive is something that, you know, is something we are working with partners of ours in the hardware business, where with uh, IoT devices, for example, with are sitting on machines. So an example, a current machine may vibrate, say, at 60, 60 times, you know, uh, per minute. But suddenly it's now vibrating at maybe 90 times uh, per minute or it's 45 times per minute. And there's something irregular here. We have those, uh, you know, that the capability of getting these signals from these IoT devices into Castella and then be able to realize that, hey, we need to create a job order, a work order to be able to address this with the customer. So the machines themselves speaking to Castella, Castella being able to create the job order and get someone to address the machines. Uh, the other thing I think which is helpful is being able to, you know, have various different uh, kind of uh, dashboards or visibility. I think having this at various different places uh, gives, you know, a, a sense of inclusivity. You know, everyone comes into together, everyone's in that, 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 that vibe of you know serving the customer and i think with Kassela, you know it gives that visibility across the different i'd, I'd like to add to that right Clifton pointed out about you know reactive preventive maintenance a lot of that sounds like it's present and future but the, another aspect of maintenance is past and what Kassela does is gives you a historical track record people move you know staff now they may move on the knowledge is in the head but with Kassela, you know documents are uploaded photos are taken records being kept when people move, the next guy comes in and goes, hey, you know, uh, this machine has been serviced five times in the last 10 months. What's going on? You've got historical data, so the new guy is not coming fresh. So while it is uh, predictive, while it is preventive, and all of that's great, you also need to be able to get historical data uh, and keep track of it across people moving, organizations changing. Uh, even your customer staff will change. And that knowledge is lost. So one of the things is you have a single source of truth uh, over time. And speaking of single source of truth, it is not just Castella because any business operates with multiple applications. You've got your ERP, you've got your, your CRM, whatever other applications. Castella integrates with all of that. So you have a single source of truth, but that is neat. that needs to be across multiple applications, platforms, products. So the same information is not just for your field staff and your field service manager. What about your finance? They need to invoice the client. They need to be able, what about your customer service team? They need to know the job is finished. Customer calls and says, hey, the guy never showed up. Then he can quickly check, um, so Mr. We, we went to your site, we fixed it, here's the record. So different people from finance to customer service, from technical to management, even sales, when they go in for the next sale, they can see, oh, this is all the jobs that have been done. We serviced you so many times. All of this needs to be across the organization. So you get a 360 view of the customer from sales to service to finance, not just your field service management team. And so Castella integrates across all of this. It completes the jigsaw puzzle. You know, you've got your ERP, your CRM, your maybe your, your, your telephony system, whatever else. And Castella integrates with that to bring all this data together and so that everybody else in, the, in your company has the same information. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember one particular situation, you know, about the past and that, you know, Andrew was mentioning about the customer who, you know, they, they actually had a particular expert that used to go for this customer for this machine. But this person moved on to, you know, from, from this particular job and the information was lost because the, yeah. the next junior guy who went there had no idea what was done in the past. I think those two or three visits that he went there, they were still not able to fix it. And eventually when they were able to find the paper record that was stored, in some place, you know, remote within the office, they finally figured out, you know, there were some photos, there were some notes, and then they realized. But imagine if you have the guy who's going in has access to that history. I think, you know, that's really a true example of what happens on a daily basis, and that clearly can be optimized. Right, right. So uh, that's basically in terms of sustainability, right? I know 
uh, you have shared the business objective. I mean, of, of course, efficiency, uh, uh, operations, uh, profits, uh, revenue as well. But as for Castella itself, uh, when we're talking about sustainability, has it, been, has it all also contributed to sustainable uh, other company initiative and goals? Yes, uh, let me take that one. I, I think, uh, you know, when I mentioned about business process and management efficiency, streamlining the way things operate efficiently is one of the key things that's still happening beyond just profit and also it's simplifying work. I, I know I sound like, you know, broken record as saying the same thing, but you have no idea how much benefit that brings when the same thing can be done in fewer steps. And that multiplies itself over the organization. So work simplification, process, re, reworking your business process, collecting information, processing that information, storing that, distributing that, all of that, even if you don't have any cost savings, just headache savings is a lot. Uh, you know, the, the information is not lost. People don't have to call up everybody from the same set of groups, just log in to find out. Finance doesn't have to chase up technical. Technical doesn't have to chase up sales. Everybody gets everything in one place. Um, so it reduces dissatisfaction, not just with customers. It reduces dissatisfaction internally, reduces friction, headaches, and unknowns. Now, a lot of things can be determined, uh, including things like fraudulent activities can be determined as well, because you've got a track of what's done. You know, when someone shows up on the site, not the guy says, yeah, I'm on the way and he's still at home. Or yeah, I'm at the site, but he's nowhere near the site. All of this information and streamlining of processes makes Castella indispensable to organizations that adopt it because they realize, wow, how have we been doing that to now? You know, we've been doing all of this before, it seems fine, but when we implement this, it exposes our problems, it fixes other problems, uh, it introduces efficiency so that the same number of people can do more things. So it's not about reducing headcount or getting people to, you know, letting go of people, it's about getting people to do things more efficiently and effectively. And like I said, headache reduction is a massive plus point. You know, you, you have a fewer churn. People like to work with things that are cutting edge. And I, I'd like to think Castella is fairly cutting edge. And then the other thing it does, it manages, you know, your service levels. And you got, you got to maintain a certain service level with your customer. So to keep that requires real-time information. As the guy arrived on the site on time, because we've got customers that says, you know, oh, your guy didn't show up. You can prove date and time stamps when they showed up, when they did the work, when they finished the work, take photographs, record the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so th this is quite impressive in terms of being able to manage the whole thing and give that visibility to your customer. And especially if you add to that a portal uh, where the customer gets visibility, then they don't have to call you for that information. In fact, they can go in and say, when did that guy come and do the job? They can get access as well. So you can extend Castella now to the customer through a portal, and that makes it invaluable to your customer. It makes your service to your customer sticky. And they say, oh, if I'm going to move to another vendor, I'd lose all of this. So you become sticky to your customer. So Anna, those are some that maybe you can share some. Yeah, I think just, just to add on to that, I think the, the, the key parts, you know, that you were very helpful, you know, what, what is helping the customers with many people, you know, with 400, 500, sometimes even thousands of work orders on daily basis. That's one part of it. But even with the smaller organizations who may not have a lot of job orders, as well as help them with even other activities such as you know, their ISO application, it's also helped them comply with RFPs that they are responding to their, you know, to their potential customers. Now, you mentioned about SDGs. Um, you know, SDGs, Sustainability Development Goals, are two main things in which we have helped. Uh, firstly, is of course, SDG 13, which is climate action. You know, firstly, is reduction of fuel, which is, you know, the whole traveling thing. You know, we've had, uh, you know, our customers who, had to travel, just go back to the office just to hand over a piece of paper, or hand over certain you know information which could have been done digitally. That has you know reduced a uh, fuel and you know all the travel that's unnecessary. Now let's go at reducing paper. Uh, I just gave you the example of one customer with 400 job orders. Imagine it's three ply paper, 400 into three every day, thousand two. Now multiply that by say 22 or 25 days, uh, and then take that and multiply it by 12 months. That's not including all the paper that will need to involve HR and finance. All of that taken away because everything's in a system and you, you take away that whole friction of you know, paper being passed on to different places. Next thing, of course, is uh, SDG 8, which is basically visibility. Now, with increased visibility, you know, our, key, our team members are able to value, you know, the focus and value chain work, you know, rather than the tedious manual work uh, that is necessary and the satisfaction of being able to do it. Uh, 
reduce travel, like we say, you know, more quality time for them, be able to do more things and take away this unnecessary time. I think, you know, MCOs, I, 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 Andrew always says this, you know, the, the whole COVID thing has been the biggest chief digital officer. It's a lot of things which we could have done differently. COVID's forced it and we had learned to be digitized. Uh, and of course, the next thing is, you know, real-time information. I think, you know, being able to take away the manual work, which is no longer necessary, focus on the value work, again, like I mentioned earlier, I think those are key things in sustainability, both SDG 8 and 13, that I think Tesla has been able to help with us. I just had a time that I mentioned about mentioned ISO process. Yeah. Uh, recall a customer that basically crafted their ISO process around Castella. Yeah. Because they were doing things, okay, whatever their process was before. Now they're saying all these steps is already in Castella. So they basically designed their ISO process and they got the certification, all the steps within Castella. So it helps to refine their processes, helps to organize the way they do it, and that's documented. So in a way, it's good for Castella because their standard operating procedure is Castella. But it also helps them uh, significantly because now they don't have to go to three different ways to do a thing. They don't have to educate their own staff because, they, okay, here's your login and use the system. Basic training, which is in, uh, something I probably we didn't mention as much. Castella is an easy to use intuitive system. And we'd, we'd love for you to take a look at it and, and you contact us, we'd love to give you a demo, but it's an easy to use system where people, once they learn to use it, it becomes second nature. It is not complex. You've got to you know, press 20 buttons in three different places. Compared to paperwork, it, is, it reduces your work and it becomes sticky to the point because then, ah, now I can do focus on my work, not focus on paper. Uh, and so streamlining processes, again, I've, I've mentioned that a few times, but that is such a benefit uh, and such a benefit to the entire organization and to the customer. So above and beyond cost and profit. Yeah, I think application, easy to use, I think is key. I think sometimes we focus on business goals, what the management wants to see, but if your guys on the ground are not using it, it takes purpose. So I think that's something we're very familiar with over the many years, and I think I'm very glad that, you know, as well as help many with that. I think the credibi credibility is the key point here, because I can see based on your uh, conclusion, also uh, knowledge that you shared to us is basically while you also at the same time trying to improve your company in terms of their operations and efficiency, but also you show the customer that, yeah, we're doing this so we can put our reputation uh, above and beyond and um, put your stamp, stamp, uh, foot on the ground in Malaysia, mentioning that we have the credibility to be to give you the best uh, uh, services or products that you can offer in the future. I, all right, that's that's really, really helpful. Uh, I'm going to interject just one more thing. Castella is a cloud uh, SaaS product, right? It's, it's a software as a service. It's on a subscription basis. So if our customers find it unusable and they say this is a waste of my time, we won't be renewing any customer. So our entire value proposition is about solving the customer's headache. If their headache is not solved, they've got the same headache after one year, you're not going to get a repeat business because ours is an annual subscription. So yeah, our, our lifeline is solving the, the customer's problem not sell and then run. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, all right. I mean, thank you very much, Andrew and Mitran. So just also, we're going to just show you a quick video about the important feature of SLA, which is related to reactive, predictive, and uh, predict prediction. Yeah. Uh, for a video.
All right, so now that's the video of SLA about understanding from what Castella can do. And now, yeah, so now we're moving on into the Q&A session. Uh, please, I uh, will encourage every audiences to submit their cues and also submit the polls that you are available on your bottom of the chat. So now we're going to take on the first Q&A session. Uh, let me just okay, open the first question. Yeah, so this is the first question. I have a team in West Malaysia and an outsourced team in East Malaysia. How will I use application across borders? I think this is the most common uh, question when you implement, implement a system. Let's say if you have two different uh, areas of operation, how will you actually use the system? Sure, maybe I can start off uh, by responding to that. So we, we've got customers in Malaysia as well, we've got customers in Australia, uh, and they may use the Australian experience that while their, their HQ may be in Melbourne, for example, They've got operations across various parts of Australia with their field technicians and so on. So one thing that Kasla has is uh, the access as well as the hierarchy module. What that helps is it able, it's able to segment you based on different needs, whether it's based on skill sets, based on whether it's location, and you'll be able to uh, monitor it with regards to, uh, so you're able to segregate with regards to what they can see and what they can do, for example. So there is a very common thing that is done where you'll be able to assign duties based on a particular type of team or based on a particular type of location. You're able to uh, manage their activities based on separate. So if, if I'm at, the, at say, a regional level, I'll be able to view, say, the three states which are under my, uh, my purview, for example. If I'm a CEO or a COO, for example, that's looking at the national activity, then I may be able to view all the activities uh, uh, that are happening on the ground. So that's to give you an idea. In Malaysia, we also have cases of where they are outsourced parties. So besides their own technicians, they also have outsourced companies that get the job done. So they get their, even their outsourced parties to use Castella to be able to manage these activities. So that's a common thing that we come across. Yeah, and I think location has got no barrier for Castella. So whether it's East Malaysia, West Malaysia, your own team, your customers' teams, your subcontractors' teams, uh, you know, it's a matter of getting them access to Castella and you record this data. And as I said, the point out you can segregate data access, who can read, who can write data access. All of that is controllable by hierarchy and both. Uh, in addition to that, we've got customers uh, who are outsourced parties. To, they support their principal. So the principal or the, the equipment manufacturer or software vendor has access to customer. Their outsourced party has a, a access to customer. Their subcontractor has access to customer. So the three tiers of people seeing the same data. So it's not a, not a problem. So whether it's subcontracted, your own staff, and different roles and permissions. Obviously, your own staff can see more data. Management can uh, uh, add or delete stuff. But maybe the field staff can only just write information. All of that's controllable. So yeah, not an issue. Right. Thank you for answering the first question. Now we move on into the second question here. He, uh, sorry, this person says that they have about more than 100 field people that fills people and also including those people who sit on, on the office as well. And how, do, how uh, of course, they're using paper, how are they able to track those people on the field as well? Sure. So the, I think there are a few parts of the, 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 when you track, I think one, one part of it that, that tends to be a focus uh, is you know where the guys, uh, so it's not the, the, the main focus for everyone, but the, for yeah. some, they want to know, uh, you know where their guys. If you'd like to do, do that, that is possible, you're able to, the location of your field guys uh, on the ground. Uh, there's of course also, you know, for PDPA purposes, there's the option to go offline, meaning that you know after working hours, weekends, and so on, you can't really track the, the location. So that's one part of it, is, which is knowing where they are. Next part of it is when they get to the particular location, which is the checking in and checking out. You know, common thing is, you know, uh, yeah, boss, I'm already there. Uh, but actually, you know, they're having you know tetare and tarif, you know, at, at a restaurant somewhere else. So with Kasla, you're able to you know, manage that, which is, you know, that unless you're within a particular close radius, you can't check in. Uh, so that's that's another part. Uh, and I think another part, which is very uh, helpful, you know, you've got this whole load of information, but you want to be, you know, receiving this particular notification, which are key to me. And when this notification com comes in, I don't need to see all the details, but job done. Okay, great. And I continue my work. And I think those notifications help. Uh, those are some some thoughts about helping, you know, a scenario of 100 old people. That means yeah, I'll add to that, it's a 100, 400, 500, 1,000. The key to managing large teams is managing information. The logistics of information is very important. And as I mentioned earlier, we have hierarchy and goals, which means it's not you know, 400 people reporting to one guy. Usually, we've got teams. We have the northern team, southern team. We've got different teams for different products.
products so you can segregate your team structure into team leaders and team some so you can assign it to a team based on geographical location you can assign work to team based on uh, complexity or product knowledge you can assign it based on various criteria like that uh, and so being able to manage that and as with the point of it triggers and notifications you can able to manage a lot of people seamlessly otherwise if you, you effectively get in, you know, without a digital system, get a flat organization. So all that information gets bombarded uh, simultaneously, and that's such a pain. It's impossible. You know, we want a client that has over, I think, over a hundred uh, people, and uh, they've got hundreds of job orders every day. Sometimes I wonder how were they doing it before, yes. and they were doing this manually. So credit to them for being able to do it manually. Yes. But now that they moved, you know, like they're never going to go back because managing, knowing where people are is part of it. In order to assign work to them. So, for example, the guy is, you know, he could be five minutes from the site or one hour from the site, but the place of where he needs to do the work. How do you know that travel time? All of this to be able to do that simultaneously across 100 people, very difficult. So, if I assign a job to a person, you know, he may be, you know, half an hour away, but with traffic, maybe it's one and a half hours away. Do I even know when he's going to get there? With Castella, I can know that in advance. If I assign it to this guy, it's going to take one hour to get there. Uh, he can optimize his own group travel time. So if you give the guys flexibility to rearrange their jobs, not you don't sequence it for them, they can organize it. They can rearrange their job based on location. So to minimize driving time or travel time. So all of this is available to the guys. So their work is a lot easier. If a guy sitting in the office plans to work for 100 people, the plan is very likely inefficient. The guy will be zigzagging across Clang Valley. That alone will drive him crazy. You know, so all of that with a large team, you absolutely need to digitalize the process. Yeah, I, I remember a customer of ours who, you know, the guys who are very good, you know, they're very detailed, very technically sound, but sometimes, you know, the, the job overruns. And one thing that we were able to help them is that, you know, sometimes say I'm getting a job right now in Chalam and my next, uh, you know, location is in Tajan and say it's going to take me 35 minutes or 45 minutes to get there. And right now I'm at, you know, say 3.30 and the next one is at 4. Tesla is able to send you a notification to say, hey, you're unlikely going to be there on time. So again, it, it doesn't solve the fact that you're going to be late. But imagine if you're calling at 3.30 to say, boss, I'm going to be there, uh, but a bit late, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. That's certainly going to keep the customer happy. I think that's a you know, key part of managing this logistics of information. Thank you very much. Uh, are we able to have one more question? Yeah. So this is the last question for today. Uh, obviously, we have more, more, more questions, but I think we only have one more question. So, is, uh, is the field system right, that you, you have, as well as have, is only specific for field? It, it can, can it be used for other uh, departments as well, like maybe sales, marketing? Sure. Uh, can you explain that? Sure. Again, I can start off with that. Tesla has field sales as well as field service in addition to transport management. So, there is certainly a, a connection between the sales order and even linking it to the job order. So it can be linked in that sense. So it can be used by those activities. We have a heavy machinery customer, for example, that even uses it for their technicians who are in-house for their own, you know, then stuff that are coming in, but they use it to manage all of those activities. So no, it doesn't necessarily be the test need to be for the guys who are out there. It could even be used by the guys who are in-house doing the repair in-house. Yeah, and usually in some cases, it's a hybrid. The guy's not necessarily a field guy works in the office but at times has to work. Um, so one of the one of the customers we're talking to now and I think you mentioned about the IoT device is to let the device and this is this is a more advanced topic because it depends on the customer's machine whether they can attach the devices to inform whether the device can inform if something's a problem and sends a guy from the office to the, the field. So it's not necessarily just the field guys but typically it is field workforce management. Uh, it's not for it's not an HR app for guys in the office, uh, but it manages the work and the work that takes place in the field. But understand also that Castella is a full; uh, it, it sees end to end in the process. So from uh, capturing the, the issue, you know, logging in the issue, the guy who's the dispatcher, that person is not a field person. The person that receives a call from the customer, the person that logs a case, and sometimes if you have a trouble ticket system. You do something like a web case. So you have a website where the customer logs in or a portal the customer logs in and sends a case. That case can be created into Castella uh, through, and you can have a manager who's managing that. So it, it serves people who are not just, uh, it can serve the guy that's managing inventory. 
We can serve the guy that's managing the dispatching of staff. We can serve the, the field, the, sorry, the office person that receives the call. So all these people are not field people, but they are part of the process to manage field work. So customer covers all of that as well. Yeah. We think the dispatch, there's two angles. One is your field team. The next thing is if you've got vehicles on the ground. For example, if uh, you have trucks, for example, and the trucks have to go and pick up at a, one location, drop off at another location, and you've got multiple of this happening on a daily basis. And you want to know, you know, in real time as this progresses, our transport management, for example, has help. And the dispatches, you know, when you've got several trucks, so many locations to go, and you're trying to do this on, you know, sheets or whiteboard, it certainly can get quite painful. So that's another example of how we use Tesla. Yeah, we're talking to a customer now who has to, uh, who's servicing equipment, delivering and servicing equipment, but the delivery team is different. So now we're talking about, okay, uh, you guys can do field service, you're using it now, we want to now also know how we're delivering it on time. Because you deliver, then, you know, the driver is not going to install the equipment. But, you know, now with Castella having delivery transport management and field service management, when the when the equipment's arrived on site, I can send my, my service technician immediately. I don't have to coordinate between two different departments. It's internally within Castella, so I can uh, transfer that information. Thank you very much, Andrew. Great, that, that's all the time that we have for the Q&A session. That's a pity. I've, uh, I've enjoyed this very much. Yes. Thanks, thanks uh, for the question. It was yes. fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. For, for those questions who were not answered, we'll be able to be uh, answering those questions directly to you. Uh, now, since we have come to the end of the webinar, uh, I hope uh, the audiences uh, feel the information is beneficial because it's really an eye-opening and it's very informative. And also, thank you for sharing the knowledge to us as well. And of course, I would like to thank uh, our speakers, Andrew and Mitran, for, for showing, uh, showcasing us what the information about uh, field service and how it relates to waste, man waste management. It's our privilege. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. Big thank you as well to Rachel and the Waste Management Association Malaysia to holding this event. It's really, uh, we really need this kind of event as well for Malaysia progress in the future as well. And yeah, so also big thanks to audience to, for, for the engagement and attending this event as well. Right, I think that's all the time that we have. Thank you very much. I hand over to you, Rachel. Thank you so much, Dato. And thank you again, um, Dato and Mitran and Andrew for sharing about what Castella can do and what can, you guys can offer. And I would like to say thank you to everyone for your time today and staying throughout the session. I do hope that you've had a productive takeaway from today's session. And what we'll do is we'll be emailing you all the materials from today's session, such as the recording and also what, uh, how waste management can be innovated and optimized using some of the points from today's session. And um, if you have any questions or you'd like to get in touch directly with Costella, you could actually head over to their website, uh, costella.com for more information and do give them a follow on um, yeah, social media platforms as well. And so without further ado, thank you so much for taking your time. And thanks again, Castella, for being a part of uh, today's session. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>